So you did mention another thing that is I probably the most tiki Disney thing because it's right there in the name, the Enchanted Tiki Room. So let's go into the parks and let's talk about the Enchanted Tiki Room. And there's, there's of course, the original. Um, and then there was that thing that happened with the Enchanted Tiki Room when it had new management. And then it had uh, – it's kind of come back around but in a smaller form from what it originally was. So what makes that tiki for okay. us? So this is the whole thing. So the Enchanted Tiki Room becomes uh, the sort of like – uh, ground zero for what tiki is for a lot of people. Um, and it's so strange. It is bizarre, the Enchanted Tiki Room, because so we had already had tiki bars, you know, coming back from World War II, tiki bars have be- become a thing. Walt actually would drink at, um, you know, places called the Royal Hawaiian and uh, and like local things. This is where he gets the idea to do the tiki room. He originally wants it to be a restaurant, but non-alcoholic. Um, but uh, so... So what's happening uh, are a few things. One, he wants to build a a new restaurant um, that's tiki related. Two, he wants to utilize this new concept of audio animatronics. Well, how do we do it? We could build a, he had been, uh, he'd seen this mechanical bird in New Orleans. This this big story that everyone knows. But he saw this mechanical bird in New Orleans and said, hey, I want to build that and I want to make it a show. So the two ideas sort of connect. Um, so this is where the idea of having like macaws um, be be the MCs of the show. The idea to have them different nationalities and none of them South Pacific. No one knows. It it's, that's weird. It's a whimsy for Walt. Um, in the original uh, Tiki Room, in uh, which didn't open with Disneyland, by the way, it came a little bit later. Uh, I believe in 58 or 59, um, he also had like tiki's out front, um, sort of like more primitive audio animatronics. But that that was really where the uh, the uh, enchanted stuff first starts coming. Um, you see all these like tiki idols. The thing about Walt in 1958 or whatever is that, you know, some of these things are right. Some of these things are representative of original gods. Uh, Raleigh Crump was a big part of this, and he had like um, he had this book called, I think it was called Sounds of the South Pacific or Waves of the South Pacific. And so he uses that to uh, to help create these original idols. And um, so they're doing it as 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 Disney and as um, representative of real tiki gods as they could. But at one point, I think they were like, uh, oh, we need to have a fire effect. And Walt's just like, oh, just make up a, a god for that or or like – Mis- misattribute that it doesn't matter and i'm like oh okay. man so uh, so so that happens in the original um and that you know very popular there used to be a barker bird outside bringing you in and then uh inside you know you have the um the songs where you know you have the sherman brothers song the tiki 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 room yes uh, and that's original and the song itself isn't very tiki uh okay which is very strange and yeah the the music that people associate most with tiki is this music called exotica, um, which is sort of loungy, a little bit um, bossa nova, um, and you know it's pioneered by these guys Les Baxter, Martin Denny, and they uh, they they bring in this loungy stuff, but they'll also do like vibraphone, they'll make animal sounds, whatever. And uh, but none of that's in the tiki room, which is interesting. So you have the Sherman Brothers song, which is a little bit more upbeat. You uh, you have the um, the Hawaiian war chant, oh, da, 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 um, which is an actual Hawaiian wedding song. It's not a war chant at all. Um, <laughs> that's it's very strange. And that actually has been brought into the world of Exotica, but that's a Hawaiiana song in Hawaii. Hawaii and Tiki are different, but connected. Okay. Um, yeah, Hawaii Hawaii becomes a state in 1959. And so there was a big wave of Hawaiiana. But even before that, in the 1920s, there was a big deal with ukulele music. And then in the 30s, and then into the 50s, when people are into, like, Hawaii music and surf and all that stuff. So Hawaii becomes a big thing and becomes connected with Tiki, but it isn't. Of tiki, and okay. then for some reason <laughs> they do a, a long Offenbach number that doesn't make any sense, uh, <laughs> and nobody wanted it except for Walt, and they took it out when they uh, they re- redid it. Gotcha. Um, 
Yeah, so that's the original, sponsored by Dole. Um, and yep. outside the original was the Tahitian Terrace. And yes. I want to talk about the Tahitian Terrace a little bit because this is where it really doubles down on Tiki. So, so okay, so inside the Tiki Room, you actually have the talking poles, which are, like, very American Tiki. And then you have, like, the big chant, which is a little bit more Tiki than anything else. It had, you know, the drums and everything. Yeah. Um, and the... Whoa! And that's more like there was a singer named Ima Sumac. Um, oh yeah, yeah, and she uh, she did a lot of singing like that, like scream singing and primal scream okay. stuff. Um, so so, but then you go outside the original Tiki Room, and there's the Tahitian Terrace, where there's a full luau. Well, not a full luau because those are four hours long, but <laughs> a truncated luau. Got, um, yes, <laughs> <laughs> for for guests, of course. Yeah, not exactly. To use their whole day at the luau. It's a forty five yeah. minute luau, um, okay. but there's like good food. They have non alcoholic like punches um, that you would similar to like a mocktail at a tiki bar. There's fire dancers. It's really, really cool. Um, I think that's that one was sponsored by Stouffer's. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so I'm you have brand, this, I guess, or something. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> but so, yeah, you could leave the tiki room and you had to get a special ticket for it. And then you could go out and like do a special ticket for the, uh, the Tahitian Terrace. And so that was a really cool thing. Uh, and then eventually the, the Tahitian Terrace goes away and Aladdin's show comes in and isn't yeah. popular. Um, and then <laughs> what comes in after is the uh, the Enchanted with the uh, Tropical Hideaway. So uh, I know I'm bouncing everywhere around here. No, that's that's perfect. I kind of wanted to go that way and out, you know out out of the Tiki Room to the Tropical Hideaway next. So that's perfect. Well, so the Tropical Hideaway. It's interesting because when the Tiki Room opens in, in Walt Disney World, the Magic Kingdom, 1971. It's called, uh, oh, is it called the Tropical Hideaway? The Tropical Serenade. Tropical right? Serenade. Um, and and then so, uh, so they have that until the 80s. And then Michael Eisner said, hey, um, nobody likes this anymore. Wrong. He's like, it's so corny and so square. We're going to like bring in our, our we're going to, we're going to use Synergy. And we're, we're gonna, sometimes synergy is great. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes not. Sometimes, so great. And, and so we're bringing in Zazu and Iago, and uh, they're hate. They they're just screaming over the original Tiki Room. It's it's really unpleasant. I um, remember that one. It was. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and so it comes back. Um, there's a fire at the uh, at at the under new management. Uh, right. The tiki Room under new management. There's a fire, and. Uh, no one knows how that fire happened, but I think but a it was lot of people ex- are happy about it. No. Oh yeah, A plus fire. Uh, thank you, fire. Uh, and uh, and so the original Tiki Room comes back, and it's not called the Tropical Serenade anymore. It's called Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. So that Tropical Serenade gets mentioned in both Tiki Rooms, and it's it's very similar to the one in California. Uh, but then, uh, but you know, going back to it, the Tropical Hideaway opens up. At uh at Disneyland and it's sort of outside where the Tahitian Terrace used to be, and this is what I would think of as third wave tiki. So we have the original. Um, there's pre tiki, then there's the original tiki thing that happened in the late '40s, early '50s, and that continues into the '70s. Goes away uh, late '90s, early '90s to late '90s. Um, the the revival comes in, and that's sort of where we get eventually Trader Sam's. Um, and then the third wave is what I would call a, a more um, I don't want to say woke, uh, but I will. <laughs> you can. It's, you it's can. sort of it's sort of a woke. For, <laughs> it's basically it's try it's tiki, um, but far more respectful of the original, the very original, you know, gotcha. um, Polynesian islands, South Pacific stuff. Um, and so we have the feel of Tiki. We have uh, Rosita. She's out there. We have uh, it's a connection to the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is great. Tol- Dole Whip. It feels like a more modern tiki bar and um, and tiki space, um, but it's not util- utilizing uh, tiki's themselves necessarily. It's not saying uh, you know. It's not really using the whole Polynesian pop thing, which is the uh, the term coined for what tiki was in America. Okay. 
um, Polynesian pop. And that's that was coined by the guy who actually wrote a, the book on Tiki before anybody oh. re- remembered what it was. It was called The Book of Tiki. Uh, his name is Sven Kirsten, and he uh, he coined the term Polynesian pop. Polynesian pop. S- yeah, yeah, it's cool. So, uh, so I would call Tropical Serenade very much Tiki. Um, okay. But it is definitely part of a newer wave. So when Tiki Bar is open now... You sort of make a decision about what you want it to be, what a restaurant, what a bar wants to be. You know, do you want to be um, adherent to the original? Do you want to actually talk? Do you want to like bring in actual history? Some bars actually want to be a little bit historically accurate and talk about actual like Marquises and Bora Bora. Um, and uh, what's interesting about tiki bars, a lot of the the more modern ones, is that they care more about Polynesian history than people who get angry that they're appropriating Polynesian history. <laughs> it's very strange. <laughs> um, but th- there's a fine line to walk, too. This is the, the whole tiki thing is, you know, is it appreciation? Is it appropriation? Or is it something, a third thing? Sometimes, and the thing is, is that sometimes it's all of those things. That third thing is, you know, are we just talking about a completely made up fantasy that's sort of based in a reality? Um, and most of the time I would say, yes, it's, this is all fantasy. Um, when you're, when you're making a tiki bar, when you're making a tiki space, the whole concept is you want to be authentically inauthentic. You want to adhere to the fantasy concept of what tiki was, not necessarily the original, what really was. So is that appropriation? Is that appreciation? That's a, that's a bigger debate. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. But what you what you said there is kind of being authentically inauthentic, I think, is one of those trends that happens through a lot of Disney's themed entertainment um, in that we're creating like the the movie version of the space. If you like this video, like and subscribe. If you really like this video, visit SynergyLovesCompany.com for the full audio podcast.